We're talking today with Lake Resources. If you don't know the company, ASX code LKE, market cap of 650 million. The company is a clean lithium development developer of utilizing clean direct lithium extraction technology for the development of sustainable high purity lithium from its flagship Carchi project in Argentina. We are joined today by David Dickinson, who is the company managing director. David, welcome back to Sydney. Thank you. David, let's start by asking, as Lake is leading the charge on a revolutionary style of lithium development, does that responsibly sit heavily on the Lake team shoulders? I wouldn't say it, it kind of sits heavily. I mean, what we're doing is, you know, we're taking, you know, with, with Lilac, taking this ion exchange DLE method and obviously taking it into our project. So I don't think there's a, a heavy responsibility. In fact, I would spin it the opposite way that, the, you know, I was, when I was talking this morning is that we've, we've, we've pulled a, a very strong technical team together who are actually really excited about taking this new technology you know, from Lila can actually put it into operation. So I don't think there's a heavy responsibility. I think there's more an excitement that, that uh, you've got an opportunity to really change the, you know, the lithium extraction business. David, you are treating this more like an oil and gas development rather than a traditional brine development. What similarities does the brine reservoir possess with an oil and gas reservoir thermodynamically? I would say, I, I often say this is more like an oil and gas project than it is about a mining project. And it's probably less about the reservoir, and it's more about actually building the, the facility. Uh, from a reservoir basis, uh, we're transporting fluid, we're transporting uh, brine. The upside of that is we're not transporting uh, hydrocarbons, which comes with you know, other safety requirements, etc. But from an oil and gas perspective, what's, what's attractive here is that uh, we're building a specialty chemical plant, so more like a petrochemical facility. So that's why I quite often talk about it's very similar to oil and gas. At the same time, we're also on the, on the upstream side, we're actually, you know, we're drilling, we're covering brine, and, and so quite similar to the upstream side of uh, oil and gas, uh, gas space. So David, uh, what technology expertise, both exploration and development wise, does the oil and gas industry bring to the DLE landscape? Yeah, so again, what I was saying before, I think that, you know, we are, you know, we're drilling wells, not particularly complicated wells compared to oil and gas. So, you know, the team that we've assembled, we've got people who have got experience in drilling in both in mining and, uh, and oil and gas. And then as we go through the process, you know, we then move into the, the process plant side of the side of, of the project. And, and the team that we hired are, are people who are, that are coming from uh, oil and gas have been involved in large uh, capital projects, process, plant type projects. So that's kind of where we've been bringing it. Now, in my, uh, in my remarks to the, you know, when we announced the, the change, you know, I kind of heavily emphasize the important part of our team is having the, the combination of both mining expertise and oil and gas expertise and, you know, been working hard to pull that together. So very happy with the team that we pulled together and the capabilities. David, uh, what are the benefits of adding one module at a time from a risk perspective? As we looked at this project, originally the plan for Lake was to build this one-off uh, 50,000 tonne plant. And when we sat back and looked at it, we saw it was fraught with, with, with a lot of risk. Now coming from oil and gas and in particularly the LNG world, how we deal with these issues is to build these plants in, in, in smaller form. So we're going to phase this project into two times 25,000 tonnes. And then each 25,000 tonnes, we're going to shrink that down to two trains of 12,500 tonnes. So the benefit of that is really as we progress through is that we start to get the lessons learned. And by the time we get to train number four, we should be experts at building this thing. Now, it also has a lot of other benefits regarding the risk. There's a lot of benefits regarding access to supply chain. There's benefits around by, you know, design one, build many. So there's a number of advantages to this. And it's not a new concept, right? I mean, it's been used in oil and gas for, for many, many decades. So very, very, very comfortable on the concept that we've selected. David, uh, discussions with, you know, uh, export and credit agents that you've already announced, are they in acceptance of the, uh, the slower but the surer approach that you announced today? Yeah, yeah. So we're, I mean, before we, before we, we announced the, the new concept today and the new schedule, uh, we spent a lot of time with all our, all our stakeholders that are under NDA. So 
uh, you know, with Lilac, who are obviously a part of this, but you know, the ACAs, the banks, and uh, off-takers. You know, from a banking perspective, there's a lot of, uh, uh, you know, support of this, mainly from the fact that we're de-risking. And if you're a bank that's about to provide finance into a project like this, any way that protects the downside is, is, is going to be supported by the bank. So, we're, you know, we've been discussing it at depth with the banks, and as I said, they've been very, very supportive of it. There's, there's, there's good reasons why we're doing it this way. David. Yes, by implement, implementing these strategy timelines and ramp up of production have blown out. But on the flip side, this more methodical approach virtually de-risks the project and ensures dearly will have a significant impact on the future of clean lithium production and the lithium global supply chain post-2030. Lake has clearly put brine and spodumene producers on notice. Would you agree? Yeah, I think so. I, you know, we're, we're not so much focused about what our competitors are doing. We're more focused on what we are doing and we are very supportive and really want to drive through uh, utilizing you know DLE uh, methodology for obviously extracting brine you know we in our in our announcement today we spoke a lot about the, the environmental advantages of DLE and we can see that in the future is the industry is going to have to come come down a path where uh, we need to look at how we extract lithium in a responsible way and that's really going to be our our mantra uh, moving forward. And I think other parts of the industry are going to look at this uh, very carefully. David Dickinson, many thanks. Thank you.